In this video we want to look at sales channels. Sales channels are a means for bringing products and services to the end customer. There is an assumption here I suppose that we're dealing with physical products. We're dealing with companies that produce physical products and we're going to move the physical products from their place of production to the customer. If it's a, a service-based um, company then the product, the end product may be delivered electronically or it could be some documentation that's produced or it could be um, a video or some piece of music or it could be an event that's delivered um, a wedding event or a conference or whatever the product is if it's a service so in that case different considerations may come into play but what we're going to look at more specifically in this video is uh, issues surrounding physical goods companies producing physical goods which have to be distributed now there are two issues when we look at this one is the looking at the right channels how should it be delivered what delivery mechanism should be used um, should it be transported by lorry by train by courier what's the, the most appropriate method of moving the product and the second thing we need to look at is how it's organized should it be moved from the company to an intermediary for example to a warehouse uh, in other words sold on to the warehouse for subsequent sale to the final purchaser so should intermediaries like warehouses and retailers and uh, different types of intermediaries should they be used in the distribution process or should the company sell directly to the, the customer. Now clearly all of this depends on how the company is structured, what its policies are, uh, efficiency criteria, the nature of the product itself. So there are many issues to consider here as to which one is most efficient, which one involves uh, the greatest return on the investments. But essentially these are issues that, that need to be uh, carefully scrutinized and looked at and and dealt with what is the the method of delivery for the product and how should it be organized so sales channels involve two activities logistics and channels of distribution and we're going to to look at these in the rest of the video we'll start with logistics In regards to sales planning, logistics refers to the process of delivering finished goods to the end customer. So that's what logistics is about. It's about delivering the final good, the, the finished good, to the end consumer. It's getting the product from the factory to the consumer. It's how that should be best organized, how it should be delivered. The process concerns effective planning where implementation and control of operations flow smoothly throughout the manufacturing and delivery of products. So the emphasis here is on not just get moving the product from the place of production to the final customer but moving it efficiently and work, moving it in a way which is reliable and reflects well on the company. It's a part of the overall quality process that the company has instituted. Uh, making a good product is is good. That's what the company should do. Making a good quality product. But it must also get the product to the customer. If it doesn't get it to the customer or it doesn't get it as promised to the customer then it reflects badly on the organization, on the company. So therefore, it's of crucial importance that the product is moved efficiently and according to the obligations that the company have given in terms of delivery. If the company said it will be delivered on Monday next, it must be delivered on the Monday. 
That's what the promise was. And to deliver it later than that, uh, or indeed earlier, which may, may also be troublesome for the customer, to deliver it outside of the, the promised time, for example, uh, looks bad on the organization, looks bad on their efficiency, on their ability to keep the targets. Uh, the reliability is called into question. So logistics is a process that tries to control distribution and do so in a manner which reflects well on the organization. It's trying to minimize the costs at the same time, the costs of distribution, and always looking for efficient ways of transporting the, the finished goods to the customer. Always looking for better ways of doing it, better ways of organizing the distribution, trying to cut costs, but at the same time ensuring that obligations are met, that the goods are, arrive as promised in good, good condition, uh, they're not damaged in transit and in fact the whole service looks very professional. So the logistical process is all part and parcel of the quality procedures that the company will have instituted internally. The logistics mix comprises of the following functions. First of all order processing requires this requires um, a close interaction between customers and their, their needs and expectations. An efficient system or tool should be in place to deal with administrative tasks and order processing. So order processing, collecting the orders from the, the customer. Um, it's, Im it's vitally important that the customer, when dealing with the organization, feels that they are not abandoned. They're not just dealing with a computer. And the computer is a very rigid machine which is pre-programmed for set responses. People's requirements may vary quite significantly and it's important that people have access to people if need be to help out in the ordering process. So customers needs and expectations need to be recorded at the, the time the order is placed for certain products or certain goods. The company must deal with the whole ordering process efficiently. The material handling, well this looks at the characteristics of the product and how it will be handled, the size, weight, the value of the, the products. These determine the storage of the products. If, it, if it's a big product it will need more storage, obviously. If it's very heavy it will need specialty equipment to move it. So it all depends on the nature of the product being produced. But the company must have provisions for material handling. So it must have uh, a good way of picking up the orders, an efficient way, and a way that is flexible from the consumer's perspective and also um, it gives the, 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 the customer confidence in the, in the business. Material handling, it must be in a sense tooled up to enable it to take the orders and have the materials and move the materials so that uh, efficient production can take place. But on the, on the material side, I'll just go back to the material side for a second, there's also an issue here of the logistical end of, of the uh, material handling side. Perhaps I, sh I should mention more about that. Um, uh, moving materials also fall, involves logistics, also involves efficiency, the efficient handling of goods, the efficient movement of goods and raw materials. And these could be within the the company itself or it could be from one site of the company to a different plant uh, perhaps at a different location but there is a logistical issue here. Whenever we consider moving, moving the product to the customer or moving uh, materials within the plant we're considering really logistics, we're considering efficient ways of moving and if raw materials as I said are very heavy specialist machines will be required and if they're very large extra warehousing will be required and 
special equipment within the warehouse to move it might be required. So the logistical system is not just moving the products from the the company at the end to the customer, it's moving the raw materials within the company, within the production process, it's moving the semi-finished products, moving the components, organizing the stores, having specialty equipment, and always looking out for ways of doing this efficiently and cutting costs. So I should emphasize that the logistical process runs right throughout the whole company as well as the final product going to the customer. So it, it applies to moving the raw materials within the business, coming handling the raw materials out of the stores onto the machine area where it's processed. The various outputs from the machines are moved back into stores. All of this is in a sense a logistical issue. Uh, it's moving materials, it's moving semi-finished products, it's moving the final product and it's all, it all needs to be considered. Warehousing, well the warehousing is the is the storage point. Uh, warehousing of products allows for mass storage and easy access. Well that's the way it should be designed. It should be designed in a way that enables the materials to flow in uh, the raw materials perhaps or the semi-finished goods and it enables them to flow out as well when required. So it's a movement. It's a movement of parts. It's a movement of raw materials, it's a movement of parts, it's a movement of semi-finished products. And once it's a movement it's a logistical issue. Then the, the quest is to find efficient ways of doing that. Inventory control. Well, it, it's important to have adequate supplies in, of stock. It, it's, it's important that customers' uh, orders can be met efficiently. Now, I know this militates against uh, the just-in-time idea, where orders are taken and production is produced quickly, efficiently, to satisfy the order that's just come in. So it's just in time and the arrivals of raw materials into the uh, production area is just in time. It comes from the suppliers just in time. The increasing demand uh, for just-in-time systems has put greater pressure um, and greater pressure on, on the people who run the system and on the system itself. And there's a greater need to control stock and there's a greater need not to overstock. So inventory control is in a sense a part of logistics as well, paradoxically, um, or hard to believe. But we normally consider inventory control as to be part of the warehousing, which is part of the production uh, system. But we could see it in terms of um, logistics. Inventory and stock in the stores are what is used in the production process and it's a movement, as I said earlier, of goods into the stores and then out into production. And once it's a movement we could classify it under logistics and talk about the efficient movement of those goods and also the quantities of the goods and the philosophy behind the management of the stores. What, what is the, the policy regarding the stores? Is it just in time or do they keep some buffer stocks just in case? Um, it's all part of the the overall thrust, if you like, to to get efficiency into the business. So logistics may consider inventory control. Transportation. When we come to transportation, we this is what we normally consider to be issues of logistics. You see, the previous points of bid, the previous four, sometimes we we don't consider those as logistical. But in fact they are. Uh, they are part of the process. Uh, in order to get the product to the, the final stages in production, to get it ready for distribution, 
it must have gone through the various processes, through the warehouse and the orders must have been taken and the the policies of the warehouse and the inventory policies and all of this fits together. And the final bit is having the product and transporting it to the customers, making sure the customers get the product. But also it's a question of making sure that raw materials flow into the business from suppliers. And transport can be costly and it should be carefully considered what's the best form of transport, what are the, the best ways of getting deliveries of raw materials in, semi-finished goods and components that are bought in, what's the best way of getting those into the factory and what's the best way of getting the finished product out of the factory? What, what type of transport is most suitable? Should the company own its own fleet of transport or should it rent? Or should it employ a specialist logistical firm to deliver its products? What's more efficient? Packaging. Uh, packaging is also important. It overlaps with the marketing function and will obviously be guided by the comments from the marketing department and on sorry regarding what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in terms of packaging and the reputation of the business and its green credentials and and so on so the products will be packaged differently it depends on the nature of the product if it's a consumer product uh, it may have more elaborate packaging uh, if it's a product going to industry they've made a, a particular component that will go to another company then the appearance of the packaging may not matter too much. So packaging and labelling of products is very important and that is part of the logistical system. It's, it's important that products are labelled precisely. Their destination is indicated, the type of product, uh, perhaps when it was produced. Um, so crucial information about the product, where it's going, what it is, etc that should appear on the packaging so items can't be lost in transport uh, in transportation they can't be they can't go to the wrong place and that's the idea now channels <coughs> excuse me channels of distribution well the sales force are directly affected by the type of distribution channels so the sales force will be influenced by the types of distribution channels that are available Management need to review channels to ensure that they are efficient and serve the purpose intended. It is necessary to have constant scrutiny of the distribution channels to make sure they are working efficiently and they are suitable. So distribution channels, does the, do the products go to an intermediary, as I said earlier, uh, go to a warehouse or some such institution, or do they go directly to the customers? Um, so how are they organized? How, are, how is distribution exactly organized? The organization must efficiently and effectively choose the distribution method that will allow them to meet their marketing objectives. The marketing personnel will have uh, some idea of what customer requirements are and the importance of different aspects of the product in terms of meeting those requirements. Aspects like, for example, the design of the product, the quality of the product, the durability of the product, and also the delivery of the product. So the marketing section, the marketing department, will give guidelines as to how important each of them are. Um, as a blanket answer, of course, we could say, well, all of them are important, all of them are critical. But the marketing department may prioritize. It may have a list of what is absolutely important and where there's perhaps a little tolerance, a little, a little give in, the, uh, in terms of the efficiency or delivery of certain products. But the point is that the organization must choose the, the best distribution method, the one which guarantees delivery the product will get to where it's going and it's done so efficiently. 
and by efficiently, I suppose we could say, at minimum cost. Now, distribution channels occur when business use third parties or intermediaries, middlemen, to bring their product or service to the market and to the target customer. So this is where we use distribution channels. We, uh, we use middlemen to distribute the product. The company makes the product let's say we, we are producers and we, we make a product, we are the company, let's assume, then we would make the product and sell the product to middlemen, to wholesalers and to outlets who are intermediate, they're between us, the producers, and the customers. Intermediaries are specialists in selling products. They have the right contacts, the right experience, and knowledge, um, operations to know exactly what they're doing and they have the facilities and they're in the field. They, they, they know what the market is, they know what the customers want, they, know, they have various contacts and they're able, to, they're able to make sales efficiently. So they're specialists. So it's logical that they should be considered. For some products, companies sell directly to the, uh, to the public, but many use intermediaries. The final selling price of products include margins paid to these intermediaries, and that's a problem. The company sets the price and it sells to the intermediaries. The intermediaries then increase the price so that they make a profit. And they either sell it to the public, to the customer, or they could sell it to yet another intermediary. So a, a wholesaler, for example, would sell to perhaps a retailer, and the retailer will add an extra margin. So the final price paid by the customers may be considerably more than that received by the producer. If intermediaries didn't exist, then the price of products could be supplied cheaper to customers. And there are different examples, some online, for example Dell computers, uh, they sell directly, they produce the computers and they sell directly to the public. And many companies are trying to experiment with this and certainly the advent of the internet and uh, e-business and e-commerce uh, is encouraging companies to try and open outlets directly with customers because there is a considerable saving to be made if that was possible. Direct distribution would be a manufacturer selling directly to the customers. And you can see it gets, uh, it's not getting complicated, but customers may have requirements from different manufacturers. So the manufacturers sell directly to the customers. Now with indirect distribution, then the manufacturers sell to an intermediary and the intermediary sells to the customers. So it's, it's different. It's a totally different way of, of distribution. The more intermediaries uh, involved, um, the more inter intermediaries involved means less power a business has over the products it's that's been sold. So if there are wholesalers and retailers, in a sense the producer is losing power. It's losing power to the wholesaler. The wholesaler will do uh, what they need to move the product, to sell the product. Uh, but they will perhaps sell it on to retailers and the retailers will then position the products in their shops uh, according to the importance they give to the product and the likelihood of gaining sales. So they'll want their, their best selling products to be most easily accessible by customers in the shops. That means that some producers may have products which are stored on the top shelf away from everything else and will therefore perhaps not move as fast, will not be sold as fast. And as we move away from the producer through various intermediaries, producers tend to have less power. Customers behave 
um, customers' behaviour uh, has changed during recent years. They become more mobile. They're, they're conscious of time pressure. Expect products of reasonable quality. And they want good customer service and um, easy a access to product availability. And this may be a, a function of the internet that we as customers, uh, as consumers, we're, we've, we've become more demanding. We want good quality products. We want them cheaply. Uh, they must have good styling and good. Uh, they must look good. Uh, they must be durable. Good quality, uh, good value for money. Um, they must be easily accessible. And uh, when we want the product, we want it now, or within a, a short time span. We don't want to wait for weeks and weeks if we can help it. We want it now, immediately, or within a short space of time. And this perhaps is a, a change in society. Uh, we are less tolerant now of failures, product failures. We're less tolerant of companies who produce badly designed products or products which don't fit in the, the slick world in which we, we live. So customers have changed and as a consequence everything within business has had to adjust as well from the design of the product, the quality of the product, the, the pressures on costs, the, the different philosophies in terms of production, total quality management and just in time and so on. And also the distribution to make sure that the product is available when the customers want it and in the quantities that they want. This has made uh, it vital for companies to maintain good relations with their intermediaries in order to gain access to the customers. So companies must be on good terms with the intermediaries. Companies must have uh, good terms with the, let's say, the, the wholesalers. And the companies must also tolerate the, the wholesalers' uh, way of doing business. The, the, the producers have lost power under this system. They're losing power to the wholesalers and the wholesalers to some extent are losing power to the retailers, the ones closest to the customer. So distribution channels are very important. The way they're managed is very important. And the, the physical arrangements of the distribution channels is important. The companies need to distribute in the cheapest possible way, but recognizing that in, in terms of distribution, even though they get the product to, the, to their customer in a timely fashion, their customer may, may be an intermediary. And the consequences of that is that the company loses some power over the product. The product has gone from their hands, it's gone into uh, another company's hands who will deal with the product as they see fit. And there are all sorts of issues and tensions that we could discuss here, but we're not going to because we're at the end of this particular video. But for example, uh, the warehousers, the, the warehousing people, may uh, have policies which are at variance with the, the policies of the business. Their customer services may not be as good, or the information and the help and support to give to the customers may not be as good. And of course, once that happens, it reflects badly on the product. So the producers will suffer, perhaps, because of actions taken by the, hill and the, the wholesalers and the retailers. So distribution uh, is important because maybe direct distribution to the customers will give the companies more control over the product. It will mean that their policies are implemented and implemented fully their quality issues and the way they deal with customers can be implemented and also they would save the markups that have been taken by the intermediaries. So there are many issues to consider when we look at distribution channels. It's an important area for study in the terms of business practice. That's all I'm going to deal with here. I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.